Hi, we have been talking about expressions, equations, and inequalities, and I gave you some definitions about what they were. Now we're going to be talking about where do you find the solutions of expressions, equations, and inequalities. The first is uh, evaluate. This is what we do when we are finding the value of a numerical or algebraic expression. Evaluate means that you're going to give me a number and I'm going to plug it in to the variable and we're going to go ahead and just solve it. We're going to evaluate, we're not going to solve it, we're going to evaluate what it would be if that were the number <clears throat> that x was. Solutions. From equations, you have two expressions that are equal to each other. They're expressions, okay? Even 14, if I had 2x plus 14 equals um, 25, that 25 is still an expression because remember, expressions can be numbers as well. And it will have one solution, okay? So an equation will have one solution. In equality, there are two expressions that are going to be separated by the greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than and equal to signs. And these are going to have more than one solution, okay? They can have many. Now it says a replacement set. A replacement set is a set of numbers that you're going to see that are going to be used to replace a given variable in either an expression an equation or an inequality. Normally you're going to see this in inequalities and they're going to be in braces and it's going to be listing the numbers that you were to use to see if it will make that solution or that equation, uh, if it will make it uh, the equation true or the inequality true. Let's look at a couple of these. First of all, we've got some steps that we need to follow when we are talking about evaluating. First, we, when we have the signs, we're going, when we have our steps, step one is you're going to distribute if necessary. This is just like when we were d trying to take expressions and simplify them. You're going, to sim you're going to distribute if necessary. That's your first step. The second step is to, you're going to simplify the expression by adding all of the like terms. By combining like terms, you're going to simplify it even further. Then you're going to substitute the given value or plug in the number that it has given you. And then we're going to simplify and determine if the mathematical statement is true or false. Okay, let's look at some examples. This is an expression. It is 3x plus 4. There's no equal sign. And it is telling us that the value of, two, of x is going to equal to 2. So there's nothing to distribute. There's nothing to combine. It's in simplest form. So all we have to do is plug in, okay, plug in the number. So it's going to be 3 times 2 plus 4. I know 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4 is going to equal to 10, okay? Now... This is going to be, it is equivalent to 10. This is going to be equivalent because we know that when we are doing expressions, we are trying to find evaluating, this is the um, evaluated term for two, okay? Now we're gonna look at equation. It's three X plus two, we have an equal sign, and this is given to 12. Three X plus two is an expression, and 12 is an expression, and they're equal to one another. And they want to know, is x equal to, is that a solution? So we're going to look at our equation. There's nothing to uh, distribute. We're gonna look and see if there's anything that we can combine together like like terms. There's not. It's in simplest form. So now we're gonna substitute in the two for x, and remember, we're gonna put it in parentheses around the two to protect it because we know that any time we have a coefficient in front of a variable, that means it's being the variable, or two is being multiplied by three. So three times two is six, and six plus two, it says should be equal to 12, if this is correct. I know that six plus two is equal to eight, and eight is not equal to 12. So how I would write this is x equals two, is not a solution. 
So they told me to plug in two and see if it would equal 12, and it does not. <clears throat> now, let's do a couple more. It says, are the given values a solution for the equations and inequalities. Here we have an equation, here we have an inequality. And the given values we've got are, um, let's see, hold on just a minute, I believe. Um, let's say the given values here are gonna be x equals three, and I believe this one was x equals two. Okay, so we're going to look at this and we're going to place them together. But first, we're going to ask ourselves, is there anything here that I can uh, distribute? And there's not. However, in step two, combining like terms, I can add 2x plus 4x and make that 6x equals, and I combine 2x minus x. This is the same thing as saying minus 1x. This is the same thing as saying x. So when I plug in the 3, I'm saying 6 times 3 should be equal to 3. And I know that 6 times 3 is going to give me 18, and 18 does not equal 3. So 3 is not a solution. Okay, now we've got 2x plus 4x, the same thing we had over here, is greater than 2x minus x. I can still, I don't have anything to distribute, but I can combine these like terms, which this will be 2x plus 4x is 6x. And we need to know, is it greater than 2x minus 1x? Remember, if there's no variable in front of, if there's no coefficient in front of a variable, it's assumed to be one, we know it's one. And so 2x minus 1x is x. We're going to plug in two for the x's, and we're going to say 6 times 2 should be greater than 2. And I know that 6 times 2 is 12. And is 12 greater than 2? Yes, it is. So yes, 2 is a solution. All right, now remember, very important concept number one. Inequalities can have more than one solution. Sometimes they will have one solution that they that will plug into it if they give us a replacement set, and sometimes they will have more, and we will get more into graphing these later. But let's look at these two um, expressions on either side of the inequality sign, which is greater than, that's the greater than sign, and we're gonna plug in for x a three, then we're gonna try a four, and then we're gonna try a five. But before we do that, we need to look at our expressions and ask, is there anything to distribute? And there's not here. Is there anything that needs to be combined of like terms that have not been combined? And there's not. So now all we have to do is just plug in. Let's first plug in the three. So it's gonna be two x or two times three plus three, is that greater than three times, and of course we have to plug in the three here, minus two. So this is gonna be six plus three, should be greater than, what is, that's gonna be nine minus two is seven, and do I know that is nine is greater than seven? So three is a solution for this, um, is one of the solutions. Let's try four. If I plug in a four, I can come over here and say 2x, just rewrite it, plus 3 is greater than 3x minus 2. And I know if I plug in a 4, that should be just plug it in for where the x values are. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 3 is going to give me 11. And it's saying that 3 times 4 is going to give me 12, and 12 is going to be 10. So is 11 greater than 10? Yes, it is. So this is also a solution. So 4 would be a solution for this set. Let's take the same thing again and plug in the 5. So we have to do it for each one of the numbers in our in our replacement set. I know that 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is going to be, it says should be greater than, what is 3 times 5? 
is going to be 15 minus 2. And is it true that 13 is greater than 13? Well, we know that 13 is equal to 13, but it's not greater than. So 5 would not be a solution to this set. So I can say 4x for 2x plus 3 is greater than 3x minus 2. 3 and 4 are solutions. And of course, remember, in inequalities, you have got more than one. You can have more than one answer. Now let's look at number 2. Let's look at 2. We've got 3 at 5x minus 3 is greater than or equal to, and then we've got x squared minus 2, and we have the solution sets of 2, 3, 4, and 5. I know that in this particular one, I don't have anything I have to distribute. I have nothing that I have to combine the like terms. They're already set up where all I have to do is just plug in, step three, these numbers. So I'm going to plug in two first. So five times two minus three should be greater than or equal to two squared minus two. Now, five times two is ten minus three is seven. Is seven greater than or equal to, I know two squared is two times two is four, 4 minus 2 is going to be 2. 7 is 7 greater than or equal to 2. Yes, it is. So 2 will be part of the solution. Let's go and plug in a 3. So we're going to plug in the 3 next. So we're going to say the same evaluation for, listen, this time, just so we can save space, say x times 3 minus 3 should be greater than or equal to 3 squared minus 2. Now, I know that 5 times 3 is 15, minus 3 is going to give me 12. Is 12 greater than or equal to 3 squared is 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 minus 2 is going to give me 7. Is 12 greater than or equal to 7? Yes, it is. So I know that 3 can also be a solution to this inequality. Let's plug in the 4. So we're going to have 5 times 4 minus 3 should be greater than or equal to 4 squared minus 2. I know that 5 times 4 is 20, minus 3 is 17, and 17 should it be greater than or equal to, what is 4 squared? 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16, minus 2 is going to give me 14. And 17 is greater than 14, so 4 will also work. So I've got three solutions so far that are working. Let's plug in the 5. I've got 5 times 5 minus 3 is greater than or equal to 5 squared minus 2. I've got 5 times 5 is 25 minus 3 is 22, and 22 should be greater than or equal to 5 squared is 5 times 5 is 25 minus 2 is going to be 23. 22 is not greater than, so 5 is not going to be part of the solution. So I would easily say 4, 5x minus 3 is greater than or equal to x squared minus 2. That's a funky little square there. Uh, the three, 2, 3, and 4 are solutions. Okay, so 2, 3, and 4, when plugged in and solved, it did give me solutions. All right, let's look at two more. This one here, I have to distribute. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say 2 times everything inside of that parentheses. Remember, it's 2 on the outside, so everything gets multiplied by 2. Mommy has to kiss all of her babies as they go out the door. So what is 2 times 2x? It is 4x plus, I'm going to keep that plus sign, 2 times 4 is 8, and this should be greater than 20, okay? 20 is just over on the other side, so my expression here is just 20. Do I need to combine any like terms? No. The way it happened was all I had to do was distribute, and it's in simplest terms. So now let's start plugging in the 3, the 5, the 6, and the 9. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort of say 4 times 3 plus 8, needs to be greater than 20. So 4 times 3 is 12, plus 8 
is greater than 20. And I know that 12 plus 8 is 20. And 20 is not greater than 20. They're equal to one another. So 3 is not going to work. So we're going to cross out 3. Now we're going to plug in 5. We're going to go back to the 4x plus 8 is greater than 20. And we're going to plug in a 5 for that. So 4 times 5 plus 8 should be greater than 20. And I know that this is 20 plus 8 is 28. And that does make the solution, this does make um, five will make this inequality correct. So five is correct. I'm going to come back up here and multiply in a six for x. I'm going to substitute in a six should be greater than 20. So four times six is 24 and 24 plus eight should give me, I know 24 plus six gives me 30 plus two more is going to give me 32. 32 is greater than 20. And I should see the pattern here that the higher the numbers go, the more it's going to get even further apart. And it should be correct the whole way, where 9 should be a part of the solution set. So let's look and see if that works. Is greater than 20. And I know that 4 times 9 is 36. And 36 plus 8 should be greater than 20, which I know it will be because 36 is greater than 20. So 36 plus 8 is going to give me 44 is greater than 20, and that as well works. So the solutions for all of this, I would say for 2 times, go back to your original equation, plus the quantity of 2x plus 4 is greater than 20, um, 5, 6, and 9 are solutions. I should put our true solutions. Okay? Now, let's look at this one. We have another distributive problem here. So we're going to have to say 6 times 3x and 6 times 2. And remember, we're going to carry that sign in the quantity down here. Mom's got to kiss off her baby, so we're going to have to say three, 6 times 3x is 18x minus, keeping that sign, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 5, don't forget that 5 on the end, is less than 50. Now, we've got some cleaning up to do, so we need to combine some like terms. So I've got 12 plus 5 is going to be, um, let's see, I'm going to make that a positive because I don't want to get you all confused on this. So I'm going to make that a positive. So 12, positive 12 plus 5, and we've not done integers yet, is 18x plus 17 is less than 50. So we've gone ahead and combined these, okay? Now, I've got it in simplest terms, so all I have to do is plug in the 3 and the 5. They want to know, is 3 a solution and is 5 a solution? So I'm going to come in here and say 18 times 3 plus 17 should be less than 50. Well, I know 18 times 3, I'm going to come over here and multiply. 18 times 3 is 24. Carry my 2. And 3 times 1 is going to be 3 plus 2 is 50. So 54 plus 17 is less than 50. No way. I can tell you that right now because you've got a 54. And I know that 54 plus 17, I'm just going to add it under here, is going to give me 11, and that's going to be 71. 71 is not less than 50, so 3 is not a solution. And you should already figure out by now that neither will 5 be, but let's try it out. We're going to see 18 times 5 plus um, all right, 18 times 5 plus 12 plus 7 is less than 50. I had to come up here and go to this equation here because this is where it was all being um, plugged into. And I know that, or let's do it where we've already got it here. Let's do this one instead of that one. Okay, we're going to do this one. So we're going to come up here to this where it's already been simplified. And we know that this is plus 17. So we're going to say 18 times 5. Let's just go ahead and multiply it out. That's 40. Carry my 4. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 90. So 90 plus 17 
needs to be less than 50 for five to be part of the solution. And I know that 90 plus 17 is gonna be 107 is less than 50. It is not. So these two are not gonna be part of the solution. So three and five are not a solution. Four, and we can go up here and put six times three X plus two plus five. The quantity of three X plus two plus two plus five is less than 50. So we know that these are not solutions and all you have to do is just say that they're not solutions. We're gonna be doing some more of these tomorrow so you can get the hang of it before we start working with word problems.